Marhaban ya shabab, ahlan wa sahlan to the second part of this tutorial series. As far as you can remember, um, we set up the, um, the repository on Randall.com. Now we have access to the API from the web, but we have the main problem. There's no database attached to it. I mean, as you can see, I have the project which is running now on Randall.com here. And we have some environment variables we have to set in order to get a database connection. Otherwise, it's now attached to uh, H2 database. So let's continue. Let's continue. So render is running. And as I said, we need a database. So I would suggest head over to superbase.com. Their website looks like this. And I'm already just register with your GitHub account and go to dashboard. I have here already this task DB project set up. Just click on a create a project, create a new project, set, set it up and then click on it. Okay, then wait until some things are loaded. Then here you should see project settings. And then you sh should see database. And these are your database credentials for the Postgres DB. Okay, now this is everything set up. That's great. We head over back to render.com, add environment variables here, and start adding them. We need a key always. I would just suggest. Um, They yeah, just 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 take um, the ones here out. Just make sure you put it in the use the right ones. I mean, as far as I know, you, we don't need to set a server port. Just I would just su suggest um, start with the um, yeah with the data source username. Go back to to render.com username here we can look it up username database user blah blah, blah. there we is there we, it is postgres okay then add another one go back i mean you can also um either you fork it i mean either you fork it or and uh, for the keys right now you can also look it up here in my GitHub repository. Maybe for some of you, this is easier. Go to source, main, resources. There it is, application.yaml. And just copy it from there out. If this is easier for you. Password, just like look for the password. Ah, the password is the one you have provided. So make sure you have written it down somewhere um yeah when you created the the the, the super base database i have it luckily here on my environment variables uh, yeah just will copy it out yeah just i will just pause the video copy things out and see you in a second so welcome back. I hope you can hear me. I stopped the video. So basically was what I did. I was copying out all the stuff in here. But just be careful you um, when you're copying the host, um, the host needs to be in a specific the data source URL needs to be in a specific format. So I just this is my medium.com article in part one. I just have uh, mentioned it in here uh, where it is where it is where it is okay now we go to the bottom line of this uh, wait a second wait a second now here it is um, your host comes in here so between the slashes and the colon and then you are good to go and here you have a screenshot how it should look like when you copy paste it like here in the middle after slashes is your host and then comes the colon and the port number and so on and so forth and this is my setting as you can see here 
and let's go to render as you can see this is the username here i have the full url um i will also um i will also give it in the um the structure of the url like the jdc jdbc and so on and so forth in the description driver class name i will give everything in the description of this video but you can also in the description you will also find the medium.com article and that's basically it now we can say save okay it got saved as you can see because it cannot click anything go on events and now a new deploy process got started and yeah this will take again a few minutes so i will pause again the video and then we'll see if everything got successfully deployed so see you in a second okay um, as you can see, the, the second deployment was successful. The environment variable should be added there. You can test it by going again, taking your URL. I mean, as you can see, I just already tested it, but let's do it together again. Tasks. I mean, for you, it might be empty right now, but to because you have no data, and I have data because of the medium.com article I wrote, but let's test things out. I just prepared, um, yeah, as you can see, JSON. So let's to make a post request, API v1 slash tasks. Okay, now let's send this to our server. As you can see here, we have the right URL. Let's click on test. I uh, okay it was just a little bit slow uh, maybe because of my internet connection or something like this but as you can see now we have a new task by Hummus. so let's see here in open here we have Hummus. that's great and all tasks now we have all tasks listed okay now we know that this works and yeah the thing is now we have uh, this our um, our application which is hosted on render.com connected to a real database to postgres sql and the thing is if you're not using the instance for instance if i mean <laughs> if you're not sending any request to the um to your um api after 50 minutes of inactivity the the um, virtual machine will shut down um which runs your API. And then you have to send again a request to wake it up and this can take a few minutes and so on and so forth. But nonetheless, it's just, you know, a free service of what, what render.com thankfully um, um, offers us. And so that you just know after 50 minutes of inactivity will shut down, but no problem because we are using a real database. We are using a Postgres database on superbase.com. Also thanks to Superbase to this free service. And now for every um, Android developer, client, anyone who's building uh, client-side applications, now we are, I'm specifically talking to Android developers, you can have an API, just a test API, uh, deploy it easily on render.com and then do your Android development stuff. You can concentrate developing your uh, app. And yeah, with uh, you know just um, a simple API host on render.com. So okay, I hope this was a little bit understandable. What I wanted to say, just I want to say for every uh, mobile developer out there, you can just if you are just have a little bit of uh, API experience, or you have a friend, uh, backend dev guy who can just uh, offer you a small API, you can de deploy it yourself on render.com and do your things you want to develop. Okay, now with this done, we can start with the Android application. Open your Android Studio. And click on new project. And this will be a plain old, normally XML based um, for the UI stuff um, Android app. We will not use uh, Jetpack Compose. So, and you have to give it a name my name will be similar to what is here 
just let me just grab it. I think my internet is a little bit slow. Okay, task app. Task app droid U cube. The other one is medium.com, so you guys know which repository to check out. Okay, API 25 looks good. Kotlin and yeah, this package name you can give it your own domain name if you have a domain, but um, example. Uh, I mean, com dot example dot task app uh, droid looks good for me now right now. And I would say let's click on finish. Then Android Studio opens up. I mean now the Gradle sync is in progress. And I mean this could take now again a while. Um, I would I would suggest that I see you in the next tutorial where, we'll, where I will show just um, the dependencies we need, the Gradle dependencies for the app. Oh, just, okay, forget what I said. So now the app is, I mean, the project is built up to make sure, just open here. We will adapt these, the, the project Gradle and the module, the, the app Gradle file, we'll adapt these ones now. I mean, I mean in the next tutorial, we'll ab adapt these. Um, just for now, just, I have already here a simulator to simulator set up. And now, okay, wait a second, running devices. This should be full screen window. Okay, full screen. That's great. So now let's go to main activity. Let's run this app. Uh, this can also take a little bit. Uh, yeah, I just clicked on Control R on Mac to start up. Otherwise, you just click on the play icon here and so you can run the app. Um, the first build you are doing is always the slowest. So keep that in mind. I mean, it should hopefully finish soon. And yeah, as you can see, it got finished. Now it just takes a few seconds to start the app. There we have the splash screen. It's just an Android app because we have no splash screen set up. And we have Hello World. That's great. Okay, the app runs. I mean, it's the default setting, so it should run. Uh, yeah, with that in mind, um, next thing, we, what we're going to do is to adapt um, the project uh, build Gradle file and the app build Gradle file. Uh, what we are also going to do is to uh, at the beginning, I want to I want to set all the strings values here. Then we'll set uh, the drawables. I will copy all the drawables from right from the start on that we are not bothered with that. So basically, what we are going to do is just always. Uh, otherwise, we are always have to do new and then where is it vector asset and then select an asset. But I will do this from the beginning on and. I will also rename the branch to part one, but currently Git is not enabled for the project. But yeah, we will do this in the next part. So see you in the next part. Ilalikaya Shabab.